So Edgar, what was it about the Adopt-A-Grandparent program that made you want to participate? Well, when Miss Tammy first told me about it, the only thing I could think about was helping the cottage kids because it's, she said it uh, get them better, you know, good grades and everything, and it was and it was a class that they was going through. So I said, yeah. Edgar, do you think it's important for older adults to speak to the younger generation, and why? I feel like it's oh, uh, because if I didn't, well, <laughs> okay, like. Me and Dustin, you know, we, we learn from each other. And for me to be around a younger person, and nowadays, you know, that don't happen too much. So to be around a younger person who's really got his head together and really doing things for the uh, community and everything, it seemed like that's what, I, that's what I want to do. And that's what I want to be because it's the knowledge I got in my head, I could share with him. And the knowledge he got, he could share with me. And any, well, and vice versa, with any young person. Because if you don't learn from a younger person, you, you'll stay in the old school. And the old school is not always the best. So, Dusty, what did you first think when you were informed that you would be required to do the Adopt a Grandparent program in class? When I was first informed about doing the Adopt a Grandparent program, I, I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into. I, I, I would say mainly because the title, you know, I was like, oh man, you know, and I, I thought this, this could be a lot of responsibility or it could be something that I just, you know, try and just push through, you know, and uh, to my surprise, um, it was neither of those, you know, it, it got to a point to where um, when I started, I was like, okay, I, got, I, I really got to pay attention to what's about to, to happen, you know, and um, uh, my first phone call, um, I was like, I'm making a real connection here. And that really put things in perspective for me. Um, I, I didn't really understand until that first phone call. And then that's when I knew um, that this was going to be great. What was it like for you, Dusty, to be paired with Edgar for this program? You know, I didn't expect uh, what was to come. Um, I could never have imagined that this program would be so beneficial, um, relational uh, speaking. Um, I got to know somebody that was older than me, uh, a different race than me, and found out that I thought we had been friends for probably <laughs> almost all of our life. <laughs> it, it, it was the coolest experience because, um, you know, this day and age, you don't really know um, if you what you can talk about, what you can't talk about, you know, and it got to the point to where we actually just became best friends. And I felt like even though he was older than me, it, there was times when we just feel like we're the same age because we just go through things together. And it's like, um, I mean, we even pray together. And, and you know, and, and it, it got to the point to where I didn't want that friendship to end, that connection to end. And he didn't either, and we both agreed. And I mean, we're sitting here today, you know? And um, this program does much more than I could have ever imagined. And uh, I, I would agree, uh, I think he would agree that it's f uh, both ways, you know, beneficial, beneficial uh, for both of us, you know. We get to call each other. He talks to me like I'm his grandson, <laughs> and, and I listen like he's my grandparent. And, um, you know, we even, he'll joke sometimes, like, you know, like, uh, like as my brother, my grandmother would be like, oh, I, I think you forgot about me. And, you know, and Edgar would be like, oh, you, are your fingers broke? And I'm like, I'm like, oh, dang, you know, like, he is my real grandparent, you know. <laughs> and it's great because it also holds me accountable to my grandmother, you know. I know if I'm going to call her, then I'm going to call him. And I know that if I'm going to call him, I'm going to call her. So it does more um, than I imagined inside the program and outside the program. Edgar, what did you like about being partnered with Dusty for the Adopt-A-Grandparent program? Well, 
I didn't know what to expect at first. But then when I uh, when I seen Dustin and met him uh, through when we first started off, I, I looked him up on Facebook to see what I'll get myself into. <laughs> <laughs> and when I see, when I did that, I seen you know he had a lot of experience, and he texted me and he told me about the different things he had went through with his dad and everything else. He told me a lot of the things about his background. And uh, I said, okay, this guy's okay. So <laughs> we started talking. And like I said, I said, are you going to ever call me instead of texting? Yeah. And so he finally <laughs> went on and called me. And we've been talking ever since. You know, we just, it's just like a, a long lost brother, brother more than like a, a grandson or adopted child or something, you know, because that's what I feel for him. Yeah. Uh, what did speaking with Dusty Weekly do for you? It lifted my morals because he's a positive guy. <laughs> and, you know, you are, you're a positive guy. And, you know, when you, when you talk to me, you, you wasn't like, you wasn't shy. You wasn't trying to be more than what you are. Mm. You know, you, touched, you explained to me about your, what, what you was doing in school and everything else and how you was trying to get this program you know, why you was in it and everything. And it touched my heart. So, you know, and he told me some other stories too about his life and what's going on. But the point came down to, well, so you know what, man? You love God, I love God. Come on to my church. <laughs> he came to my church. That's right. And he that's ended up right. joining my church. So yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know. Yeah. Dusty, what did you learn about yourself in this process? You know, I realized, um, you know, one, cause at first I started texting him. And, you know, as he said, he was like, are you going to call me? And, uh, you know, I let him, I gave him a little background in the text about, you know, who I was, you know, my age, my interests, my likes. So that way he would kind of have like a little, uh, little script of me, you know, um, but bef before the voice, you know, and um, I, I at first I pretended I was too busy, you know, uh, to, 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 to call him. Yeah, I did. And uh, uh, once we got to talking, though, um, I realized that I could only have this authentic experience with him by, you know, being honest with him and you know sharing with him like what was going on with me in school what i was doing in my day-to-day -day life you know what was going on at work and then we started to have genuine conversation it was not it wasn't mechanical anymore um with our conversations it became organic and mm -hmm. i think that that's really what opened up uh me to wanting to meet him in person uh and then um, it got to the point where I started visiting him at church and then I became a member of his church because uh, it just got to be that we wanted to be around each other so much, you know, outside of over the phone and the voice, you know, and we took we took precautions, you know, we have we had masks, we have uh, um, sanitizer and things like that, you know, but um, the whole experience, um, I was, you know, I refer to him as my grandparent whenever I was around friends. I'm like, hey, I've got to make a call. Or I got to I got to call my grandparent, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, OK, you know, um, and it made it easy for me to it, it was nicer to even say that because then I didn't have anybody arguing with me about me spending my time with him. And I tell you what, five minutes, I was like, I'm gonna make a five minute phone call an hour and a half later. <laughs> An hour, an hour and a half later, you know, um, we're, we're, we're just like, we're going on. And then it's like, okay, look, I'm gonna go eat. I'm gonna go watch my show, you know, and then yeah. I'll talk, I'll talk to you tomorrow, you know? And so, and then if we go too long without talking to each other, maybe two, three days, you know, he, he'll be like, he's going to call me up. Like, well, he'll, he'll call me, you know? <laughs> and then, and then we're both like, I thought you was going to call. And then, and then we, we get to joking about it, but then we're right back at it again. Yeah. What skills as a social work student would you say that you've learned by connecting with Edgar? So skills, um, I would say I, I learned from Edgar the ability to let things flow naturally. You know, um, I, I think that um, I got some uh, uh, 
talk centered therapy, like uh, some talk therapy, uh, person centered therapy. So like uh, talk therapy where um, I listen, you know, because I learned that um, it's not a, it's not about me, you know, it's not about him. It's about us as an experience, you know, and I really was interested in what he had to say, what was going on, the fact that he still works, you know, and he has uh, disabilities or impairments, you know, but he doesn't even consider those things he just does what he does and gets up I mean, he gets up 4 30 in the morning and i'm like complaining i gotta get up at you know eight mm -hmm. and um you know uh, the skills um are seeing you know this grown man doing what he's doing um and then using my cognitive flexibility to um decipher hey this this is what i need to do uh this is how i need to respond and patience you know patience and not always wanting to just spill what I have to spill over the phone. I needed to listen to him, you know, and um, hear what he's going through, you know, and being able to hear what he's going through, it, it, it gave me, I guess, a more humane approach to what I'm going to be possibly encountering in the future, you know, with whoever I, whoever else I might talk to, you know, um, be, being his age, being uh, it, whoever it may be, you know. So um, I, I think I probably couldn't almost count all the skills on, on two hands, maybe. What would you tell others about this program and its importance? I think I'll tell them. First of all, it's a wonderful thing because you're helping somebody to, to go through college. You know, you're helping somebody else. And you know, it's not about us anymore in this life. It's about helping somebody. And if I can help Justin any kind of way or any college student, I, I, I think I got, what, five or six different grandkids. Uh, grand, That's a lot. Doctors, grandkids, <laughs> uh, grand, whatever you want to call That's it. That's cool. <laughs> you know, I got five of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, none of us look at each other as, as, a, as a color. You know, yeah, oh, no. color nothing. Mm -hmm. First time I've seen him, he came to my church. I was in the choir stand, and he walked in. I jumped out the choir stand and ran, and we had a, the biggest hug. You know, oh yeah, <laughs> we, 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 you know, and it was a genuine. You know, it was genuine, and uh, it's just the idea of having somebody to care about you. Yes. And the program is proving that because if we could bring me and him together, it could bring me and to Carol, and I, I like to mention other people's names, but I got about, like I said, five more mm -hmm. people that I, I associate, you know, they, they call me and everything else. And uh, all of them, we got along good. You know, mm -hmm. all of them, we still, we, we still keep, we still keep in touch, you know, with, with, with each other and everything. But none of them like this one. You know, Dustin for the, he got, you know, it just, I would tell anybody that it's worthwhile because you, you're helping somebody and you're helping yourself because when you're talking to somebody that you really care about and you want to see them flourish in life, when, you know, what better thing can you do than spend time with somebody? That's right. You, know, you can't give money all the time. You can't give food and clothing all the time, but you can give your time. And that, that's more valuable than anything. To me. I agree. What would you tell other students, Dusty, about this program and its importance? Connection. You know, we might think that we're helping them solely, but I think that we're helping each other. I find myself, you know, uh, I'm 35 now, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I interact with a lot of people, but that doesn't mean I'm not lonely. You know, and uh, on my like dark, darkest days, on my lowest days, I can call Edgar and for some reason he answers. And just the fact that knowing that he's going to answer for me because of this program, it's that's enough for me. You know, the, the fact that I know that I have somebody there that I didn't before. And like I said, I'm I'm only 35, so I can only imagine the benefits that it's going to have for other uh, grandparents, you know, because I I can see w how our relationship is, but I think it's important for us to be able to, as as students um, and and people, as social workers, to get that connection out there, you know, because who else could be benefiting from this, you know? 
Um, this was a big eye opener for me, learning the things that these grandparents go through, you know, as in, in regards to um, their transportations, is, is, is their mental health, you know, like their day to day lives. I think that um, I, I think that there's a lot more uh, to this program than 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 meets the eye, you know, and um, it's just the joy that it brings to you as a as a social worker, as a person. Um, I think the the impact that it has, you know, and um, for Edgar and I, this is just the beginning, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, sure, all of our days are numbered, you know, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to try for the rest of our lives to enjoy our conversations, enjoy our laughs. I think me and him laugh more than anybody I know. Sometimes we just laugh just to laugh. Like, uh, I, I, I called him one day and, uh, we just both started laughing, you know, and, and then we, that's all we needed for that day. So I think the importance of students taking this program seriously, you know, um, is, is huge, you know, don't sell yourself short, don't sell your grandparents short, you know, and don't sell the program short because this impactful program means more to me than I could ever imagine. I mean, I got to enjoy more than I could have expected and there's still more to come. Amen. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Amen. Cool. And do you have any advice, Edgar, uh, for Dusty. Yes, uh, I would tell him, go to school. I would tell him, go and make, make something out of yourself. Life is too short. You see the news every day. Our young people are getting killed every day in the streets. They're dying. They don't, they don't want to do nothing. You know, you go to some neighborhoods, you see kids hanging out in the streets and everything. It's not about that. It's about getting out here to go ahead and make a something out of yourself. You know, make something out of your life. Go to school, you know, like I said, I can't, you can't, you can't, I can't stress that enough. You know, the people say, well, I ain't going to school, I'm too old to go to school. He say 30, how old? 35. 35. You're going to be up there with me pretty soon. You, uh, <laughs> but you're going to school, you know, <laughs> and you enjoying it. That's right. And you got it, you know, you're doing something that you really love. And, you know, it shows because if you didn't, you wouldn't be talking to me like you would. You wouldn't have came around to me like you did. You know, you, you can't, you come to me with a with a pure heart, and that's what a, that's all about love. Everything we do nowadays should be about love, you know. And people say, "Don't tell another man you love him." I love you, just oh, yeah, you know, I, you know, because you know. And I, I I appreciate the program because they put us together. That's right. I appreciate the program because they put me together with the other uh, adopted, you know, grandkids I got. Yeah. You know, I love it because they all treat me good. And see, we all need somebody. You know, I, I might have a real family and things like that, but we all need somebody to show that they really care, who don't know you that much, mm -hmm. you know, who don't owe you nothing because they re blood relative or anything like that, you know, and it's hard to find that nowadays. So I would tell young people to stay true to yourself. Don't let nobody change your heart. Don't let nobody change your mind. And I would tell them to go ahead and find God. If you don't find God, find you some kind of religion or something, some kind of foundation that you could build your life on and build your trust on. That's what I would tell. And do you have any final words, Dusty, you'd like to share? I would say that um, work hard, be genuine, be honest, because the skills that I've learned are helping me be the best social worker that I can be, no matter what program I'm going to be in. And um, I think that if you pay attention, you do the work, you're going to be where you need to be, with who you need to be, and you're going to make the right connections with who, whoever that is. God got a purpose for all of us. And he puts people where he wants them to be. That's right. He will put them in your life. He put people in your life for a reason. That's right. And he put you in my life for a reason. Amen. You know, and I thank God for this program. Me too. <laughs> Man, give me your hand. <laughs> Don't give me no fish. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.